let's go ahead and build this Keynesian consumption function from the ground up and talk about some of the aspects that you've already read about. So we're going to look at the relationship between disposable income, which is Y minus T, and overall consumption, which is C. We know that it starts at some level of autonomous consumption. That's the part of consumption that doesn't deal with the disposable income. That's why it starts at zero. And we know it's going to be a straight line and it's going to be upward sloping. We're going to see a positive relationship between income and consumption. And so I'm actually going to use uh, the ruler here to show that we want to start at that point, but we want to make sure that it's upward sloping and the angle at which is going to depend on the slope. And so we can do that here with this ruler here. Let me get rid of the ruler. And this is going to be my overall level of consumption. Notice there's a positive relationship with that disposable income. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of points and then we can see some of the other stuff that we've defined. Uh, so let's say this is our level of uh, Y minus T, let's just call this A, and this one over here, call this Y minus T, B. We come up here, we would get point A along our function. We come up here, we would get point B along our function. As I go over, I would get my level of consumption sub A, my level of consumption sub B. And now we can see a few different things on this. Let's go ahead and look at the change between these two points, right? So the, the change of disposable income versus the change in consumption, that's going to actually measure the slope of this line, right, which is rise over run which is just going to equal the change in C over my change in Y minus T. And this is equal to that marginal propensity to consume. So you see the marginal propensity to consume, we're going to say is constant. And it's always going to be between zero and one. And that's because it's gonna be a percentage of additional income that goes towards consumption. Let's look at this idea of uh, average propensity to consume. So what is APC? APC is the just total consumption divided by that uh, total disposable income. Now, we would want that to be, it could be a change, but it has to be a change from zero. So what we do is I'm going to go ahead and get this ruler out again. I'm actually going to take a vector out of the origin. What I mean by that is I'm going to sit here and draw a straight line out of the origin. The reason why I'm doing that is because now I can look at the slope of this line, right? What's the slope of this line look like? Well, the slope of this line is going to be, again, the rise over the run, rise over run. But now it's the change in C, but it's going to be like C sub A, right? The rise is C sub A minus zero over Y uh, minus T A minus zero because it's going back to the origin, right? So the zeros, we just don't include those. So what it is, is it's just that exact same APC value that we're looking at here. So the slope is always going to be the APC at, in this case, that's point C A or at point A. Well, then what do we happens? What do we talk about in this lesson? We talked about that as someone gets richer, as there's more income, we're going to see that APC actually fall. And so this right here is going to be the APC at point B. And so we can notice as our income goes up, my average propensity to consume or the average amount of my income that I put towards consumption goes down, meaning that I start to save more. And so these were some of the things that Keynes came up with back in the 1930s with this Keynesian consumption function and consumption model.